We'll talk about things like pests and disease and what to watch for. We'll talk about um, pruning our trees. We'll talk about planting shelter belts, what to do for the future trees. Um, yeah, we've got, we've got a whole bunch of things on the go and I'm excited to kick this off and bring this over the next, what, two months, a little better than two months we'll be doing this. So um, at the end of the session, I will let you know when the next session will be, as well as the ones in the future, so you can mark your calendars. Toso, welcome to the County of Stettler. Thank you, Quentin. I, I really appreciate your invitation to this wonderful county that I've been so many times. And as you said, we will have our 10 sessions on all of the topics of the trees. Actually, you know what, Quentin, I would also encourage the people participants to send you the email or text or whatever to also they what kind of topic they would like to hear as well, um, which also would give us some idea that we can cover all of the all of the topics and interests in the trees in your county. So um, I really appreciate that. that that's uh, really good you say that. Um, I shared that on Facebook that if they couldn't attend the session, they had something about uh, disease and, and pests specifically, I will be checking the Facebook page and I'll be putting those questions towards you. And um, what we're going to do is keep all of our attendees muted, but by all means, hit the chat page and I'll ask the question. You can probably read it as well and we'll get those answered as best we can. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to start sharing my uh, screen right away. Okay, uh, do you guys see the now my, my slides? Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Um, again, I, I just want to thank to uh, Quinton and the uh, County of Settler for inviting me to give, give this presentation on the uh, variety of the topics. And uh, today we're going to talk about some of the tree pests that are basically last two months. And in my 21 years in Alberta, I think this was the worst year when it comes to um, insects and disease problem and also as well uh, winter kill. There's lots of trees that were killed with a very harsh winter. And now we are in the midst of the drought that is also creating the wreck among the many trees. Um, I was, uh, yes, the last four days I was in Grand Cache and heavy snowmoak and also the drought uh, started affecting uh, aspen, uh, aspen trees as well. Lots of trees, uh, lots of leaves are curling and which are symptoms of the, of the drought. So um, again, we're gonna to go to some of the major pests that uh, happened in the last two months, and as well as some of the diseases that most likely you do have in your county and uh, what you can do about it. Um, a little bit of myself, I've been doing this for almost now 27 years. I used to work with the government of Alberta, but now in the last year and a half, I have my own businesses, actually two businesses. And we provide a little range of the of the services uh, related to the trees, forestry and agroforestry. And um, we offer service to the really uh, group, a variety of the, of the businesses from golf courses to municipal government, parks, urban developers and NGOs. And the uh, people who do know me, they really do know that the trees is my passion and I, I really do have a, a passion for trees. As I said, I'm just quickly tell you about our services, arborist services. I, I'm not, um, uh, in the business of removing the trees whatsoever. Uh, there is a plenty of companies who can do that, but I provide the consulting services. Uh, one of them is tree risk uh, hazard assessments. If any of you guys have a campground, so you're from the town of Settler and you need a, a risk uh, assessment, I can do that. Appraisal, management of the, of the pests. And I do the only pruning I do is uh, uh, fruit trees. I grew up in the orchard back in former Yugoslavia when we had the orchards for 60 years. My grandpa and my uh, father taught me how to prune the, how to prune the uh, old variety of the orchard trees. I do also have a project of working with the counties to provide the uh, tree inventory and tree and forest management plans. Uh, two, or two of them already I have on, uh, on the projects. And natural forest as well and agroforestry. Uh, one of the things my business a little bit expanded is that we provide some of the supplier for the mostly counties and towns and uh, for the uh, for the first pest services that we provide the traps and pheromones and uh, we sold uh, for the mountain pine beetle uh, verberone 
we provide the supply uh, to the municipalities, not as much to individual. This is this uh, products are much more for municipality or or the uh, business people, not not as much for the individual. Uh, but we do have a variety of the of the supply for the tree pass control and monitor. Now I'm gonna start. Uh, always start with the key message. And first one is extremely important. Um, I always use this. Uh, Treatment without diagnosis is more practice in any profession. Um, and I've seen to come to the trees, I've seen over and over people are making common mistakes. Um, they treat uh, trees for the whatever reason and not even have a slightest idea what's the cause. And that's a total malpractice. Either you come from professional or you do that to your own. Uh, so don't, my message is don't treat anything until you really find out what's the cause. And, uh, and you probably know the symptoms, but you might know, not know what's the cause. The second message is diversify. Plant as many as po possible trees and shrubs on your property. The more of them that you have, the healthier it's gonna be, the less problem you're gonna have and less damages to your trees and shrubs that you have. So as many as possible you can plant, that's the best thing you can do. Um, what most people don't understand that 99% of the fungus, insects, diseases, wildlife, viruses, and bacteria are beneficial. So lots of people these days, every day, call me, what can I spray with? Don't spray with anything, again, until you know what exactly it is. Because if you start spraying, you're going to kill 99% of the good one. Um, I will explain to you the difference between the symptoms and cause. Lots of people can recognize the symptoms, but the cause could be it's a really most important thing that you need to know. Um, without cause, uh, really you, you're shooting in the dark. As I said, don't use chemicals unless you know exactly what it is. Don't panic because there's lots of things you can do. Uh, but the biggest thing you can do is actually monitor. Uh, lots of people call me when it's already too late and nothing can be done. And again, monitoring is extremely important. We do have a Lots of problem last um, all, almost all the time with the winter kill. Uh, I call environmental issues that include a, a, a very harsh winter. We have a drought now. Uh, very common uh, killer of the trees are salt and herbicides. Uh, and I will gonna talk a little bit about that. Uh, for some of the things that you really only can do is a pruning. Uh, most of the time is that the only option you have, nothing else you can do. And the last and not least is educate yourself and learn. There's lots of material. Even on my website, I have a blog that you can find lots of information on the, on the trees as well. So there's lots of uh, information out there. This is a picture of a good friend of mine, just the, uh, west of the, uh, the Red Deer, uh, Terry Krauss. Uh, just 13 years ago, this was an open pasture. As you can see from the north side, uh, there was nothing there. He started all of those the trees. And I use this as an example. 13 years ago, it was open field. He planted 54 different trees and shrub species in this 10 acres. And not just that, he planted in different ages. So there are some of the trees that are one year old, some of the trees are 13 years old. And same thing with the shrubs. The difference between this property and the neighboring property, as you can see, in neighboring property, you have a just row of the spruce trees or in this case, you have a spruce and, and, uh, and some shrubs, is this. If you get a very cold or bad winter and that can wipe out all of those spruce trees, or you have a spruce beetle that exists in area, or you have a fungi called cytospora that can wipe out all of those spruce trees, these enabling property will be really no trees and totally open. And, uh, and all of the spruce trees would be gone. If that same thing is gonna hap happen to the Terry place, it, okay, the spruce tree is gonna be gone, but other 53 species will not be affected or way less will be affected because again, if the spruce beetle, it's only gonna go on the spruce and it's not gonna affect any other 53 species. So the, my message to you is, again, this is really important. The more trees and shrubs you have, the less problem you have. And the last but not least, for lots of people over there who are acreage owners or, or farmers, doesn't matter, um, having this property is probably 30% more uh, valuable from financial point of view than having the property nearby. 
And again, that's one of the things also is keep in mind that there is the value, the trees are asset uh, to, to your property and keeping them alive, keeping them uh, diversify is gonna be uh, better for, you, uh, for yourself, but also for environment. And you're gonna have a less problem with the pests because what are the sound of the pests that's going after the spruce, the other pests in the, in the, in the hybrid poplar is gonna attack the bad one on the spruce. And that's how our system works. And that's why it's important. I always said diversify, diversify, diversify. The best thing you can do um, to your property. The other thing also, uh, folks, uh, as I said, depending where you live, keep those uh, wetlands, keep those little marshes, keep those in natural uh, uh, bluff of the, of the natural aspen and forest. Keep them, uh, keep the, some of the dead, even dead trees. They have a lot, they are home for so many beneficial insects and disease and, and the fungi and viruses, bacteria. And those are one that is gonna keep in, uh, in check of your trees for the bad ones. So having them, uh, having those, uh, all of those other landscape in native prairie in Stadler, if you have some of them, they have a lots of beneficial insects and insect fungi and virus and bacteria that will go after the bad ones. I know in agriculture crop way back, maybe 15 years ago, Canola Council approached me about, uh, about this diversity. And I told them, keep those wetlands, plant, plant the tree around the canola fields, keep the diversification because what are the viruses and bacteria and fungi in the trees will really help canola uh, 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 to reduce the potential stress from the insects and disease in, in canola that you exist. So, and the Canola Council now is really promoting uh, all of the shelter belts and diversification because they realize we do have a monoculture of canola in many areas. So keep those in natural habitat. Now, as I said, uh, you guys have a so many, we have a so many beneficial, uh, beneficial insects and fungi and viruses. Uh, this one is rubber fly, uh, can take 200 bad insects uh, that can uh, kill in a day, just one, one of them. Uh, uh, this one is interesting. Uh, this wasp can sense under the bark where are the bad bugs are, and they inject uh, eggs into the, this bad bug, and eventually inside of this, uh, inside of this larvae, it grows new wasp. And that's one of the way they kill the bad bugs in that sense. And they have a, they literally melt on, on ovipository on, the, on this little wasp. It literally melts the bark and know exactly where to lay the eggs into the other, uh, other pests. Uh, we have a no idea about fungi, less than 1% of the fungi we know. I know one thing with the fungi, there was no wood, there is no blade of green grass, shrubs or trees that is not in the relationship with the, some of the fungi. And the same thing applied to the viruses. I use this quote a lot. When you kill a, a natural, uh, a natural uh, enemies or the pests, you inherit to work. And that's, that's applied to anything. So we build our roads through our wetland or drain the wetlands or uh, destroy the forest. And then we inherit the problem with the flooding. We inherit the problem with, uh, with erosion. We inherit the problem, all kinds of problems that we try to fix it later on. So work with the nature versus fight with the nature as I always said. Now, here is a very important thing. This is the real pictures from, the, from myself and from the clients that I get it. And uh, what you see now is the symptoms. And people send me the pictures. You, you can see the browning here. You can see the dead willow. You can see some of the rolling. You can see the, some of the reddish in, in the spruce. You can see the scrubby uh, looking uh, trees and shrubs. You can see something that is really just brown. You see that something looking black. You see the bark is gone one way or another. Those are symptoms. People like myself has to find the cause. And again, lots of people jump into the system. symptoms. I had a, last Saturday, actually, one fellow said to me, Tosha, I have a this and this. And when I went over there, in, and it's nothing of that. Actually, he was identifying the good, good insect. He thought it was a bad one. So again, look for the symptoms and try to find the cause. This is what is the cause or all of those are symptoms. What you have in the left, it's a winter burn. 
which is last winter was horrendous for spruce, pine, and, uh, and the coniferous in, in, overall. Uh, this little uh, Brandon cedar uh, was 100% almost brown like this uh, two winters ago. And it's like a one block away from my home. Now it's 100% green and it's a winter burn. This one was an aerial spraying. Uh, which is happening more and more, unfortunately, uh, during the crop spraying that people spray people's shelter belts. And what is a little bit scary to me in the last three or four years, I'm finding more and more people going to the court because of the chemical use in killing the neighboring the trees and shelter belts. Um, this is an insect leaf, leaf roller, roller that you can find anywhere, pretty much. This is a fungi. Uh, this is in the city of Edmonton, salt. What salt can do, and salt is one of the major killer of the of the trees in rural area. This is a bacteria. That's not even a disease. It's bacteria. It's called fire blight. Very deadly, and uh, and can do the lots of damage. This is a fungi uh, from the black knot. This is a porcupine, and this is a woodpecker. So as you can see, if I go back, this is what I get most of the time. People ask me what's the problem. And I go to the process of elimination. I go to the process of the things to figure out what is the real cause. And that's, that's why message is treatment with the, without diagnosis is a malpractice. And lots of people will think that when, on the left is, uh, is uh, it could be diseases. It could be they'll find a small little insect or, or something like that. Um, it's not. It's a winter, it's a winter burn. Uh, chemical use, again, it was used to be, you're going to find lots of insects and disease in this area, but that's not the cause. The cause was a, a chemical that killed the trees. So it's, again, just always keep in mind, look, yeah, symptoms are important, and you have to know what are the symptoms. Always look for the cause. It's the cause that once you know the cause, then you might be able to do something. The other thing what is very, very important for, your, for yourself is look surrounding area. Look, uh, if your trees are on the roads uh, for the dust, for the uh, salt, for the chemical drifts, if you are in the, in the acreages, if you have a horses or not that can do, have a, a, a root damage, if you have a livestock from the browsing to urea and compaction, if you have a wildlife in your area, drought, chemical use on your own lawn, all of that surrounding forces play the role or overall health of your trees. And many of them, again, greatly contribute, in some cases are, are causes for your trees to be declining or be dead. And again, to me, I always, when people ask me for the problems, uh, I said, I need to know surrounding area. I need to know what's going on because that tree is not isolated thing. The surrounding forces play the greatly uh, of, on the overall health of the trees. This one is also very common. People get a little bit freak out when they see all of those are deformations. Uh, beside the one on the right, it's a gal. It is deadly disease on the pine. And I was, again, last uh, week I was, uh, no, actually this week I was in Grand Cache. Almost 30% of the pine is, was infested by this Western gal rust. And it can be definitely deadly. But all the rest of them is really just cosmetics. It's really never gonna kill your trees. They look ugly, they look scary, they look all, but it's never, ever, ever gonna kill the trees. Unless you're maybe in the, in the tree nursery per, uh, business that you know you have to deal with this. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Um, and again, I, you're gonna see in my presentation, I said, hey, it's a cosmetics, recognize what it is. You might do add a little bit water and that's it. Not much, not much needs to be done, and it's just part of the nature. And this actually gulls play lots of role for the many birds, many other insects actually that uh, provided food uh, to them. Now, the bad one or a very ugly one, if I would have a face to face presentation with, uh, with you, I would ask you to recognize all, all of those uh, five of them. And it's, I always said, it's a less than 1%. And uh, and they are de definitely bad and, and very ugly as a call. This is what they are, uh, mountain pine beetle. I was going through Jasper uh, and it was rained of, the, of our uh, of forest. It has been killed by the mountain pine beetle. Northern thistle is wrecking lots of areas with our crops. Our malaria rot, again, in natural forest, uh, killed lots of, lots of spruce trees. 
salmonella of course for now food unfortunately we knew as we got uh the news that some people got uh, poisoned with salmonella and the last and not least we are still in the midst of it it's covid 19 it's a virus um that is yeah oh, definitely ugly but all of them again are parts of the of the environment parts of the parts of the earth in a nutshell viruses are probably two billion years old and it's been all around with the bacteria i always said we have a three to four pounds of bacteria in our stomach. If without that, uh, we wouldn't be living. Uh, I read the other day, I think 8% of our entire DNA are viruses. Parts of our DNA are viruses, let alone what else they perform to us. So definitely they're ugly. Definitely they can do the lots of damage. But again, that's, that's the parts of the parts of the nature as well. Now, when you look at the problem with the trees, I divide into the three area. One of them is the leaves. And you can see either the leaves are, are chewed or deformed or they're hollow or pierced or the, you, have a, uh, you have a web, you have all kind of things. So I divide and say, okay, is it in leaf area or is it in the, in the branch area or trunk area? What is the damage? Always look where, where it starts uh, or its roots. I always said, uh, one of the biggest uh, decline in your tree is when you damage the roots. The roots are like an engine. It's like a little, if you have a healthy, uh, healthy roots, uh, you're going to have a healthy trees. And I said, when I said it's like an engine, if you have a good engine, you can have a problem with, uh, with uh, chassis, with uh, other parts, but en engine will take care of that. But if you have a bad engine, doesn't matter what other parts they're going to start falling apart. And I always said that uh, when I look into the trees, I was in Grand Cash and I showed to the staff and the people in the community what you do if you plant it too deep, if you damage the roots, you right away inherit the problems, right away trees is going to decline and the lifespan of the trees are shortened by 50, 60, 70%. So the roots, always pay attention to the roots. For the leaves and needles, it's much more easier to identify what's, what is the problem. Now I'm going to go through some of the things that is we experienced the last two months. So we went literally, we had a, I looked at, temp, I looked at temperature um, for one project. We have a long and cold spring. We almost didn't have a spring at all. In some area, uh, by the end of the Ma May, we still have a frozen soil. It was really cold and miserable uh, and dry spring. That's the other thing. It's not just that, it was dry spring. And then we jump into the heat and it was crazy. So one of the first things we, we got this year was aphids. Aphids was everywhere. I got so many problems with aphids and photos uh, this last month or so. Um, they are every, any tree from the conifers to the harvest species, they go after the everything. So they come with different shapes and colors. What they do, they suck the sap from the leaves, causing them to turn yellow or became deformed, eventually fell off. One of the biggest things uh, uh, to identify the aphids is the, the extractor, extractor honeydew. So when you come over there, you're going to see the kind of a sticky uh, sap coming out. And that's the aphids. So what happened, actually aphids are protected by the, by the ants. And ants are protect aphids because they extract the honeydew, which is a wonderful sugar for the for the ants. So in this picture, on both of them, all you see the on the black actually it's not the aphids; it's the lots of ants on both of them, and they are protecting the aphids. And aphids love that protection, and uh, and it's a mutual beneficial for both of them. But definitely, they can be they can be destructive. This this series was just everywhere. They are everywhere. I haven't seen so much aphids than in my 21 years in Alberta. Um, they go rapidly. They have a several generation uh, that, uh, that can and they produce very, very quickly. So what you can do about it? Well, first thing about what I do and what I said to people, I soak them with the high pressure water. Just They don't like water. They, they don't like cold weather. They don't like rain. Uh, so if you soak them with the water, uh, many of them were going to fall off, many is going to go down, and they cannot handle too much cold. And again, that's one of the probably best and easiest way to control the control the some of the aphids. 
There's a plenty. They have a plenty of natural predators. I have one client. He went and bought uh, uh, lots of uh, lady beetles and uh, just released them in their trees. And they will go after the after the aphids. And I, I, I've seen um, uh, one person sent me, and they didn't know the larvae of the lady beetles. And they thought it was a really, really ugly insect that is killing the trees. When I told them that's a lady beetles, they and very beneficial one, <laughs> they couldn't believe it. So um, again, it's very important that you recognize the, what are the, some of the beneficial insects. If that doesn't work, try to use insecticide soap. Um, and again, soap can many ways go after their skin or they became slippery to them. And uh, last and not least, uh, it was several areas this year. I said to people, it's so bad with the aphids. Uh, I said, go with the melatonin and just try to knock them off. Um, again, make sure that you check if you use the some of the chemicals, check out for the uh, for the potential for the birds, and because some of those chemicals can damage the birds and other beneficial insects. So, just sometimes that's where you you have to judge should I should use the chemicals or not. But again, it was like a three or four cases. I said, you know what, try to save the trees because it was almost eighty, you know, really really bad, and and they tried to defoliate the whole tree. So, uh, yeah, sometimes you you do need to use the chemicals. So they are still around there, plenty of them. They reproduce, um, and biggest thing is monitor, because they reproduce very quickly. You 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 think even if you spray with melatonin, and you kill, uh, let's say eighty percent, within a 10, 15 days they can come back. So just just monitor. That's the biggest thing you can do. Spider mites. Um, it's they are not even a, a per se insect. They're much more like a crabs. Uh, they have a four legs instead of three, uh, uh, three pair of legs. Uh, how much insect to have? They also go from late uh, May to September. In my two spruce trees last year in September, it's just brown. And so where they go, they go start in lower branches and uh, and they go in internal inside of the lower branches. Once they get get a critical amount of the spider mites, they start spreading. On the furthest of the, on the branch and up, as well. So uh, they definitely can be uh, uh, kill the branches, kill the tree, uh, and they pierce the needles. They suck the sap, uh, uh, sap, and that's the way it, it's killed the needles. They have a, this webbing, and again, it's really noticeable. You can see lots of web. The best thing you can do to find out if you have a mites, you take a sheet of paper, white sheet of paper, okay. What I did the other day, if you put a white sheet of paper, you shake the branch and you're going to get lots of things. It's going to fall on that sheet of paper. Okay. If you see the uh, either red or black or whatever, the things like I start crawling very fast. That's the aphid. And they grow, very, they, they crawl very fast from, on that sheet of paper. Again, on Saturday, I showed to the one client and he said, oh my goodness, I can get it now. Because when I shake the, shake the branch, Lots of things, you know, needles and other little insects fell down, but they, they don't move. But aphids move, start moving right away. And that's what you can recognize e e earliest to figure out, oh my goodness, they have aphids. And usually, again, they have that yellowish color that is, uh, that is uh, uh, very noticeable inboard, inboard toward the tree. So, again, there is a, uh, there is a lady beetles that you can use. Uh, there is a, some predatory mites. They also don't like uh, rain or, or, or water either. What you might do, you might take a dishwater soap and try to put in, in inside of the water and, and spray them, or, or, or and spray them if you have a small few small little trees. Again, they don't like to be wet, and that's that's one of the way to control the aphids. Okay, now the one it's right now as we speak is the is the is the uh, uh, yellow headed spruce soulfly. Now this one on the left. I got a client around uh, well, Cochrane, just south of Cochrane. And actually, this was the first time I've seen Alberta. Uh, it's also soulfly that was uh, defoliating the spruce trees, but it was introduced soulfly. It's a European uh, soulfly that is chewing and eating spruce tree uh, on this case. This is a native. This on the on the bottom of the corner, it's a native, and it's uh, really green and with a yellow hat. And they always come up in the in like a four, five, six, seven, ten. They always come in groupings, and you can find them. You have to really come close. I was in Slave Lake other week, and I showed to the staff 
of the yellow uh, yellow color so far. You really have to come a little bit close. Again, you might take a sheet of paper, shake it. Many of them, some of them may, may fall, uh, fall down. It's definitely, do you usually go after the spruce tree, which is, I don't know, probably up to 30, 35 feet. And, um, and they can defoliate. Right now, they are ravaging lots of spruce trees. If you have a small little spruce tree, you might have, a, you check, for, check out for this one. You're going to start, they, only, they start from the top and they're moving downwards. You're going to see the top of the tree first total defoliation. They, they eat now new growth and they can strip your trees out of needles very quickly. Young tree will recover, but they can come next year. And eventually within a year or two, they can kill the tree. Even, you know, as people say five, six years, I've seen the trees within a two or three years killed. Uh, because of defoliation and also bad bad soil uh, that was tree was planted. So depending on the also the soil that you have, uh, if you have one tree, try to remove by hands, which is nasty business to do, to squish them and remove them. Uh, if you need to, is outbreak use melatonin, and again watch out for the watch out for the damage. The other thing what I also said with this one is if you take a high pressure hose and just try to blast it, you know they're usually on the top of the of the twigs, that's where they start. And if you notice them, try to blast them with a high pressure hose, uh, you know, the, to, to fell, on, fell on the ground. But they are right now active. They, I was, yesterday I've seen them almost on daily basis. I've seen, I've seen the yellow heather so, spruce so fly. I'm not sure in your county you have, but again, usually now the top of the tree are totally defoliated. Uh, by the, within the next week or two, they will be gone. They're gonna be cocooned and uh, and prepare for the next next uh, outbreak in next spring. Um, white pine weevil, uh, it, again, it's last six, seven years that is really taking the top of the spruce trees. They don't go after the pine, even though it's named pine weevil. And you're gonna see, if you go close in this branch, you're gonna see the holes, okay? You're gonna see the shepherd crook on the top of the uh, things. Uh, Prune now in July, you take this little branch, look at how further hole goes and prune them, let's say here. If you hole end up here, you prune them here, you put in a bucket and burn them. And they are repeating, they can repeat over and over. Uh, eventually once tree kind of grow enough, probably 40 feet, they will stop it. Um, there's no chemicals. It, it, there is a one, but again, effectiveness is so, questionable and it's extremely expensive and the timing like this year lots of people say to me when should i spray uh i said i don't know because we have a such a cold and dry spring and uh, for example uh, i was in the rocky view county they have outbreak of the spruce budworm in brack creek area in every book and literature said uh the larvae should sh start showing up second or third week no third and fourth week in may I went over there in June first week. I couldn't find a single larvae of the of the spruce budwood. They start popping up in second or third week in, in June. And again, because of the local weather. And that's sometimes hard when to, when to spray them. It's the timing. And that you have to be really expert. And I am not expert in the spraying and using the chemicals in that sense. Um, this one is the winter, uh, it's a willow leaf uh, miner or winter uh, willow blotch leaf miner, whatever you want to call it. Lots of right now, if you guys in your county, I, I bet you have a, uh, this willow, this willow that is uh, uh, brown, like a whole shrub of the willow is brown. And I have uh, lots of folks like a six, seven years ago calling me that, uh, that this willow is brown because of the oil and gas activity. And, uh, and they start blaming oil and gas. They start blaming the counties for the spraying and killing the willows and on and on. And it was not. I went to the radio and went to the media. I said, no, it's, it's this little insect that create a hole, created this like a blotch and can take whole willow tree that is uh, totally brown. Now, this, is, this picture was taken on Wednesday. In, again, this was in, uh, again, between the Jasper and, and uh, Grand Cash. And the whole row is absolutely like this. And some of them are 100% uh, infested by this uh, little insect. 
it's a cosmetics, never gonna kill the willow, uh, never gonna make any damage. If you have a lower leaf willow or some of the leaf, leaf, willows in your yard, you can water, but it will never ever gonna kill the tree, not even weaken the tree. Even though it's a 100% defoliation tree, they cover back, come back, and no problem at all. But again, I bet in your area, if you have some of the willows and you see them uh, uh, brown, uh, you might think, oh, what is killing my willow? This is the most likely cause. Um, this one, lots of people call me of, uh, because of the mountain pine beetle. They mixed up those two. Uh, you can, I've seen them both in pine and spruce. Um, they have this like a big blotch of the, of the in, inside of the trees. This is where the hole is. There is a larva go inside. If you have one tree, one person took a uh, like a little wire and put inside, they tried to kill the larvae. There's lots of natural predators. Um, in some cases, you can be in the branch, you can, you can maybe prune the branch. Um, generally speaking, I never seen trees dead by these, none of them. Uh, most of the time, uh, this has happened when people do the damage uh, trunk uh, by the lawn mower or weed walker. And it's kind of weakened a little bit trees and, and invited this one. But I never seen treat that uh, from this one. Now, the foliators, the worst one so far I've seen was a spruce bar, uh, span worm this year. I haven't got lots of uh, forest and caterpillars and uh, aspen tortics because, again, we have a cold spring. Uh, most of the defoliators, they start uh, showing up in late April. And they ravaging by the by the May by mid June the most of them are gone, generally speaking plus minus, um, and that's why we, this year it was so cold, so cold and so prolonged. That's why I haven't got lots of lots of defoliators uh, so far. This one that was also defoliator is uh, Linden Loop, and uh, I, I got uh, those photos for my dear friends in Mendio Provost, which is just east of you guys. Um, and it was, I, when I saw this maple shelter belt, entire row of the maple, Manitoba maple, uh, was wiped out and never seen something like this. I've seen the lots of linden looper can take lots of trees, but I never seen something like this. And they will go after the maple, elm, oak, birch, name it. They are really, they will eat eating. And um, they will go from May until early July. They most likely should have been gone. Uh, they have uh, this really, they're beautiful actually, little larvae, they have uh, this orangey color with the strips and, and uh, making like a, like a little, uh, it's called looper, it's like a loop they make with their body, with their moving, um, definitely can be very deadly. Uh, so there is uh, this product, it's called uh, Bacillus thuringiensis. you can buy your home hardware, if you have a few of them, you can spray them. At the beginning, probably early May, if you see them, spray them when they are small. If that doesn't work and you have a one or two tree, but infested by the by this one, let's say in May or June, and defoliate your trees, what you might do, you take a band in late September uh, before they all emerge and start flying. Um, you put this uh, adhesive, it's called Tanglefoot, and apply to that band. Uh, and they will not be able to crawl back to the trees. And uh, that's one of the ways to control the, control the uh, loop. So it definitely can be very, very damaging, no doubt about that. And again, I've never seen like probably three quarters of the mile or half mile was total defoliation by this one. And it's just the east of you guys. So you might have some of this. I don't know, not sure. Aspen leaf roller, um, it's all the time, every year. It's a cosmetics, no control. I've seen the whole tree being defoliated by this one and uh, uh, or rolled and they fell off. Um, again, if you do this, the only thing you can do is keep water the trees and not much, not much you can do about it. A defoliators is definitely reduce the vigor of the tree. Um, I know your county that you have a lots of aspen in some of the in older older aspen, probably over the 78 years of age, uh, the foliators can be finally nailed in the coffin. What that means to you guys, it can increase the amount of dead forest, dead trees in your shelter belts or natural forest. And uh, what is my worries are the fire. Um, 
we are in the midst of the fire. If you have a lot of dead forest uh, from the diesel, the polluters, other insects, uh, expect that you may get also fire. And the question is, are you prepared or not, or what to do? Um, definitely can be nuisance uh, from the larva crawling or silt. Uh, and uh, it was three years ago in highway uh, to Fort McMurray uh, became so slippery. It was the one person uh, was driving the summer time and got slippery road and somehow lost the control and lost the life. Unfortunately, uh, it was so many of them across the highway. Uh, that was a forest that can't fill. So uh, watch out for them. I think they're over now. Uh, you might have a, a full web board, web warp. This is the with this one. You might have this one all the way in September. They can defoliate. They they are very hairy, and uh, watch out for this one though. That that can be that can be still around. Um, this one, uh, it's called true bugs. Uh, this is actually one or two pictures are from Quinton. So Cameron was Grand Prairie in Stutler County. <laughs> Send me. Um, it's been outbreak of this one like crazy. Again, in your heck of the woods, uh, Camrose County got me a lot, uh, Provost County, Bataskan County, you guys, there seems to be outbreak of this one, and Edmonton as well. Um, and they go after the green black ash, uh, early June, July, maybe August, they can go. Uh, sometimes it's really not worried, but if you have a really outbreak, water them, Water your trees, definitely. There is insecticide soap uh, can uh, stop them heavy outbreaks. And uh, if in month of June, you can wash out the bugs in July, they're already in effect. So it is, it is around, it is definitely kill the, uh, uh, kill the uh, trees, uh, not kill, leaves, can kill the leaves and uh, it's a piercing. And again, this is, the, this is that little bug. You flip over the leaves, guys, you're gonna have like a little black dots uh that's uh that's a, uh, like a little pooping that's uh, that's uh, uh what they extract and that's what how can you uh, identify them okay and you have in your county and again i think i sent the quinton information about about this one more birch leaf miner is so much outbreak in, in edmonton it's all of the birch tree that i he, he live, live here in edmonton area are affected by this one uh, the only thing with the birch, with this one, well water and make sure that in the fall, this tree got the water. Avoid the root, root damage. Do not fertilize. Now you already passed, uh, I always said, if you want to fertilize, fertilize from April to July 15. After that, don't fertilize your trees because you're going to do the more harm than, than, uh, uh, than, than good to those trees. Also this one on a cotton aster, oyster shell scales. Um, they, you might check your, you might check your uh, uh, hedges if you have them on lilac as well, dogwood. Uh, it seems to me the last four or five years, there is a plenty of these uh, around. So horticultural oil, it's the best thing in, in, you can do is in April, March, April, that you can apply horticultural oil and it can definitely um, suppress the population. There is the other one that is, if you guys have elm trees, and I know on city or town of Stettler, you have a lots of elm trees. There is a European elm scale. You can find the information on my blog. It's really ravaging our elm. It's in, uh, that European elm scale is introduced species. And you have a, like a, right now, if you see the elm trees, they're like a black suiting around the, around the trunk. And you go close, you flip over, you're gonna see the, like a little white dot. That's a scale. It's really, really making lots of damages to our elm trees. So watch out for that one. I didn't, I didn't put uh, this time. The other one is uh, diseases. You guys, I can guarantee you have that one. It's called rhizosphera or stigmina or alophodermium on, on, on pine. And it, this is how it works. In your spruce tree, you have a this year growth. You're going to see the green flush. And then in year two, three, four, you're going to see the uh, yellow uh, or, uh, or, or brown. And this is from this. Uh, disease. Generally speaking, it will not kill your trees. It will definitely a little bit weaken your trees, but it's not going to kill trees. But if you have a year after year, it might be able to some, some branches will be uh, dead and trees again will survive, generally speaking. Effect of this one, your tree looks like a naked. So you have this pine, all of the needles are gone and you only have a new growth. 
And suddenly he said, oh my God, I don't have a needle in, in, um, on my pine tree, on my spruce tree. Trees is still okay, trees is still alive, it carry on. Um, if you look close up, you're gonna see the, uh, on the spruce tree like a little black dots. That's what is rhizosphera or called needle cast. And I know you guys have them in your county. The other one is, is uh, affect both coniferous and the hardwood species, but coniferous species most likely is on the, it's on spruce. It's called the uh, Cytospora. Uh, sorry guys, that's my phone. And they wiped out whole branch, like here. No new growth, nothing. Just, and they are sporadic. They take one branch at a time and uh, uh, definitely can, can kill your trees. If you see something like this, sterilize your uh, pruning tools, uh, cut them out, uh, dispose them, don't keep them around the trees. And again, provide the water and, uh, and uh, fertilizer in the spring and water them in late in the fall as well. Uh, leaf spot, you might have them uh, and it's going on probably um, year round. It's deadly for lots of aspen and hybrid poplar. Only thing you can do is the rake and remove if you see those needles. I wanna emphasize one thing. We have Alberta Plant Health Lab run by the government of Alberta. If you have any probably diseases, uh, you can take a sample, give it to the Quinton. Quinton is gonna probably send to the lab and they will identify really what, what disease you have. So that's one of the things that it's really a uh, good thing that we have in, uh, have in Alberta. Fire blight, if you guys have uh, apples and pears and hawthorns and mountain ash and goldaster, and you have a, uh, your, your apple tree green or, or mountain ash totally green and, and suddenly you came in the morning and, and it's like this. This picture of the le left is from town of Horsby. I was two weeks before I was doing the tree inventory and I measured this tree uh, and it was totally green. Uh, third week, uh, staff sent me this photo and it was, um, it was a fire blight. And it's literally somebody took a tiger torch and, and go after the tree. It's a bacteria, it's a perfect condition now and can be very deadly. This one is on apple on the bottom and they can different branches. And the only thing you can do, uh, take that branch and cut the whole branch, put in a bag, sterilize your tool before you cut the other branch. Otherwise you're gonna spread it. And, and again, this one is really deadly. And the only thing you can do is the pruning, okay? So watch out for this one. And it's probably right now you might have some of them. As I said, uh, disease is so difficult. Good thing we have Alberta Plant Health Lab that can provide uh, services to municipalities. So if you do have a, some, suspect some of the disease, uh, we can take, you take a sample and the lab can identify what it is. Now we have a I call a biotic factors, drought, winter kill and, uh, and uh, salt and herbicides. Uh, drought, uh, right now I've seen yesterday in Yellowhead County, acres after acres and parkland, uh, uh, aspen with leaves are so thin and it's a drought. And it's really worries me. I know in the Peace River region last several years, we have a drought and uh, millions of acres of the aspen has been wiped out. And uh, Last year, two years ago, we had a check like fire, and again, they burned the aspen in that aspen. So for you guys in the, in the fire management or, or emergency in your county, if you, have a, if you have a, you know, look for the fire risk down the road, if you have lots of, lots of uh, damage from the drought that we already experienced and will experience uh, further down the road. Um, what you can do is, yeah, if you can water, before you do watering, please do, you must do the testing on your water for sodium. Lots of people water the tree with a high level of sodium and they, instead of helping the trees, you are killing the trees. So test your water with the sodium. If you have too much sodium, don't water them because you're gonna kill the trees by the sodium. So test your water if not uh, now, you, and then uh, use watering for the trees to suppress the drought. The problem is drought also, it's weak in the trees fungi and bacteria and viruses come after and they can provide the final layer. Uh, winter kill. I have like 80% of the problem is, was a winter kill. And again, what I want to emphasize, you should already know if you have a tree right now that was affected by the winter kill and that branch and no new growth, nothing, cut the trees down, it's over. 
if in April and May, in this particular area, all of this little twig and branch was affected by the winter kill, but the bud, bud of, the, of this little twig was alive and they start flushing out and uh, new, new, uh, new growth come in and everything is fine. Remember guys, I told you about this cedar, whole cedar were brown, absolutely all, all of them. If you come here now, it's totally green. But if you have experienced winter kilt uh, right, right now from the last, last winter and you have uh, your trees is brown and no new growth, it's kaput. So the best way what you can do, if you take the branch and if it's bending, it still have uh, some juices, it might be alive. If it snaps, it's killed. So what you can do, mulch, 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 mulch. It's uh, what is happening if you mulch your trees, uh, the cold air is not going to go into the roots and kill the roots. And also water your tree in, in the fall. Winter kill, how this work, uh, usually in south, southwest uh, parts of the tree, sun goes low in, in uh, let's say, February or March. A little bit when you might plus one or plus two, and the radiation hit the needles and uh, tow them. And the water starts flow, uh, flowing. Then the wind and the cold snaps, and that's how they kill the kill this. So the only thing what you can do is mulch your trees, water them in the fall, and that's it. You nothing else. Don't try to put a wrap around or anything like that. And for some of the species, I was planting them in a the south southwest exposure. This this tree was planted in southwest exposure, and it's it's doing very well, but it is definitely affected by the by the winter kill. Chemicals. Please, now lots of people use the chemicals. I have a, like this morning, people call me the local farmer, use for the crop and wiped out half mile of the somebody's shelter. He took a sample of the soil, he took a sample of the, of, the, of the needles, sent to the lab. There's only one lab in Ontario we could do and reaffirm it was a spraying and probably it's gonna go to the court and it's gonna be damaged. Uh, uh, recovery for the people. And the guy said, I've been doing the, keeping those trees for 35 years and this guy totally neglect and kill my trees. It's absolute and instant killer. And if you guys out there don't know what you're doing, number one, take a training <laughs> with the county staff. They will know what they're doing. Uh, they're trained and certified and they know how to train people. Um, it can kill three ways. Direct spraying, drifts, very common. And the last and not least, go to the roots and absorption. So lots of people use the weed and feed as a fertilizer, not knowing that, that you have a chemicals into it. It's really take these guys seriously. Like I always said, salt and chemicals is 90% of the killing of the trees. Uh, winter kill is also high percentage. But salt and chemicals is really, I call them instant killers. It's, uh, it's not as much salt, but chemicals, I call them instant killers. And be careful, really be careful uh, what you're doing with the chemicals around the trees. Uh, this is just some of the symptoms. Uh, on the left corner, it was spraying. It's like a shotgun as a chemical drift hit at various parts of the tree, twirling and twisting and everything else as a symptom. Scalping is the symptoms. This one here is a spillover from actually oil and gas. And they spray it with the soil sterilant and some really nasty stuff. Run out of over there, run out of, 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 across the road and kill all of this guy's spruce tree. And of course, guy was furious because these trees are 50 years old and doesn't come overnight. So really be careful with the chemicals. The other thing what is today as we speak, lots of people do the mowing, cutting the grass and weed walking, and it's absolutely unnecessary to kill the roots or kill the collar or kill the trunk. Of, I, I, I was in, again, in Grand Cash. 80% of the trees are de-planted and 80% of the trees are weed walker damage. It's, it's mind-boggling, and it's caused the arm in the leg. Don't do that to your trees. Don't cut too low. Don't damage the root. Don't damage. The best thing to protect this one is to put the wood, wood chips. You, you're done. It's going to protect the tree roots. It's going to protect from the weed walker. It's going to protect from the lawn mower. And it's nothing but the best uh, uh, wood chips can do. You avoid this because if you do this, you invite the fungi. Once you get the fungi, 
you can uh, you can say goodbye to your tree and that's what that's that's avoidable there's a lots of books i use those three books on daily basis i have a few other this is a good book of a good friend of mine or both of them of the ken fry and dear friend of mine doug mccauley i use them as well there's a, so much material out, out there that you can use guys and if you don't know you know you always contact the people who do know what is what is all about when to act the biggest thing monitor 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 number two find out what do you know your tree lots of people do, do, can't recognize the tree surround the gear understand or recognize environmental damage understand the symptoms versus cause insects and diseases come in the life so as i said most of the foliators are, are gone something else is coming out now probably month of august you might have a, a bronze leaf disease on your aspen or swedish aspen so you have to understand each of those they have a different time when they're showing up and catching them on the time is crucial how much is the degree of damage not you know just having a few of them no big deal but how much is that degree that is oh my goodness that's going to affect my tree really badly um keep in mind that that fungus and insects and disease in and, and bacteria and virus are beneficial and use chemicals as a last resource what are the options you have most of the time it's the first one cultural treatment pruning fertilizing watering mulching that's the best thing you can do um destruction if you do the pruning or, or something like that destroy the some of the some of those uh affected by the black knot or affected by some diseases you can destroy them biological chemical treatments generally speaking again i can use the btk this is a very for many of the insects uh and you have a you have a, a lady beetles you can use and chemicals generally speaking you have a two those are two the choices horticultural oil or melatonin so those are really options that you have and you are again watering are the fertilizing and are the don't damage uh by the by the chemicals by the by the uh, lawn mower or something like that avoidance that's the third, fifth one i called it avoidance avoid the mistake so you can do that i will repeat this you've seen i finished my slide at the beginning and in the end treatment without diagnosis is malpractice uh, don't jump into the conclusion to know what it is until you really know what it is this is my contact i cover whole alberta generally speaking how i work if you do have a problem contact the county <laughs> sorry uh, quinton that they can contact you and quinton can send me the photo say tosha what the heck is this or something like that right um if you yeah, i have on my blog you can follow me on the blog i write lots of lots of things about trees if you really need me and you want to pay me it's yeah i can come but again there is a cost to that and uh um we can go from there so quinton i'm yours now thanks toso um yeah by all means use me um that's what i'm here for i can try my best to answer the questions about bugs about disease about herbicide damage help with your tree planting plans and if i'm stumped i go to toso that's my go-to guy um and you know what? I've got a lot of the same books. Ken Fry, we've had a lot of instruction from him. He's he's taught me a lot. Doug McCauley, my provincial supervisor, I go to him lots too. But I mean, this is this is why I brought you Toso because no sense me trying to repeat what he can say. He knows it best. Um, yeah, I've been watching the chat page. Nobody has any questions yet. Please post them there. I've been looking on Facebook. Nobody's posted anything there. Um, I will share my screen and pop up a few. I'm just going to uh, stop uh, sharing mine. Give me a second. Sec. Uh, okay, now yeah. it's yours. All right, can you see that? Yep. yep. All right, talking trees with Toso. So our next mark on your calendar for our next webinars, here they are. And it's pretty crazy. I got them on Tree Tuesday. 
This is the only Friday seminar. Everything else is on a Tree Tuesday. And if you notice, I'm alternating between 10 o'clock in the morning and one o'clock in the afternoon, trying to switch things up a bit, maybe catch some different people coming in for coffee or having a late lunch. Um, again, we're posting these on YouTube afterwards. So if you missed it, or if there was something you wanted to hear again, you can go on YouTube and you can uh, definitely listen to this whole presentation again. And of course, there's my contact info. So yeah, with that, uh, is there any questions, guys? Toso, thank you very much. You're more than welcome. And uh, looking for the next uh, next uh, date, whatever it is. Um, as I said, it's going to be way more topics that we can uh, I will cover. Um, and I want to thank the County of Seattle for organizing this. I hope it was useful. And the other thing I always said: spread the word. Send, uh, send to your friends and colleagues and let them know about this and about the event that the county is organizing and uh, um, looking forward to hear from you. And again, give the, give the Quentin some ideas. What would you like to uh, hear uh, when it comes to the trees and shrubs? Whatever you would like to hear, he will send it to me and I think I would be able to cover whatever topics you, you have in mind. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely, cool. whatever topic you might have. Absolutely. Tos and I have kind of bounced back a few ideas on what we think you guys want to hear, but by all means, shoot me some ideas and we can definitely do our best to incorporate what you're after and uh, yeah, answer your questions. That's, that's what we're here for. This is, this is what I do. I'm, I'm here to help you guys with management of pest and disease. So give us a call. Tos, so thank you very much. Thank you guys. See you in two, two weeks. See you in two weeks, August 3, 10 a.m. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys.